Uh, good morning, judges. I'm Ernest, and this is Evan. And together, we are Team Dash from Bukit Panjang Problem High School. We will be presenting about the development process of our robot for this year's RoboCup Asia Pacific Rescue Line mission. We will start by introducing our robot's design as well as the software used. Next, we will talk about how we programmed our robot to run both fields two and four, as well as our thoughts throughout the journey. Lastly, we will be sharing our learning points through this development process. Firstly, the hardware and software applied in our robot. We are using the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 to construct our robot. I'll begin by introducing the sensors used in our robot. So the robot uses a total of four sensors, one ultrasonic sensor and three color sensors. The ultrasonic sensor is used to detect the obstacle in field four to avoid collision into the obstacle. And the front facing color sensor is used to detect where the evacuation point is at in the evacuation zone so that the robot can deposit the rescue kit. The two ground facing color sensors are placed slightly less than two centimeter apart, which is the width of the black line. This ensures that the robot will be able to track the line easily as both sensors will be facing white during the line track. The ground facing color sensors are placed less than one centimeter away from the ground to ensure accurate and consistent readings from the color sensors such that the line track and green square detection is reliable. It's also used to detect the red and silver tape in both fields. For the robot to drive, we use two large motors, one on each side, connected to wheels surrounded by a tank track. The track ensures that the robot has the most points of contact with the ground, such that it will easily cross the 15 centimeter speed bumps. We also implemented a simple deposit mechanism on the back of the bot for it to deposit the rescue kit. The robot simply has to drive backwards against the wall of the evacuation point and the rescue kit will drop into the evacuation point. We chose this mechanism as it was relatively simple to create while still serving its purpose. As we did not plan to collect the victims in the evacuation zone and sort them, our simple deposit mechanism for the preloaded rescue kit was sufficient. Next, the software we used. We made use of Python programming language rather than visual scripting, as we felt that Python offers greater flexibility with our code, and it would be easier to debug. We have prior experience with Python from previous com competitions, such as uh, NRC, National Robotics Competition, and previous Rescue Line Competition. So programming in Python was not completely new to us. I will now begin by introducing Fuse 2 strategy, followed by the programming and then the challenges we face. So for this field, we aim for a full score, uh, minimally achieving 90% of the points. Due to the limited time we had to work on the code, we spent most of our effort into field 2, instead of spending more time on the evacuation zone in field 4. We did so by ensuring all the values for line tracking were calibrated correctly, such that we could consistently achieve a high score on this field. So now, uh, how do we detect the green squares? So knowing that green squares are placed before every intersection, where the ground-facing color sensors will both detect black, uh, we made it check after the intersection. Instead of constantly checking for the green squares throughout the map, we managed, uh, we managed so that when both color sensors of the robot detect black, the robot moves backwards by about 1.5 cm to check for the green squares. It then proceeds with the logic as stated in the rule book. It turns right if the right sensor detects green. It turns left if the left sensor detects green. It rotates 180 degrees if both sensors detect green and simply continues moving forward if no sensor detects green. So now for our sensor calibration. Ideally, the color sensor RGB values should be exactly 0 on black and 100 on white. However, in the real world, there are many factors that affect the readings such as light intensity, light color, and even shadows. The purpose of our sensor calibration was to produce a value between 0 and 1, where 0 represents black, which is the minimum light, and 1 represents white, the maximum light. This was done across uh, all the red, blue, and green channels of both color sensors. We took the current sensor value and subtracted the black value from it, and divided that by the result, uh, divided the result of that by the range, which is the difference between the black and white values. These calibrated values are later used in our line track. So now for the line tracking. We mainly use double line tracking throughout the run, and we made use of RGB readings of both color sensors facing the ground. 
we take the difference between the values of the color sensor of both sides to determine the error, which in turn is multiplied by a suitable coefficient for the robot to know when it should turn and how much it should turn when tracking a line. This allows for a reliable line track. However, we did use a single line track at times, such as in this tile here, where it was very tricky to get across the intersection with a double line track, as the robot uh, would keep getting stuck. So how does our single line track work? The next slide. So a single line track uh, tracks one side of the line, and the robot, uh, the robot tracks the edge of the line where the sensor is facing both black and white, which is indicated in green. We'll first calculate the error, similar to the double line track. We we take the current reflection value minus the black value and then divide that by the range. We then subtract 0 0.5 from it so that it will check the left side of the line and not rotate too much. We then multiply the error by a constant which we call the gain which provides the rotation in degrees for our robot. Uh, there's an example here on how it works. So if the left sensor sees 91, which is uh, mostly white, then it will turn to the left to get back on the black line. So one challenge raised was that the robot was unable to cross this section of the field in the picture as will not detect the green square since both sensors do not detect black first. We noticed that there was only one intersection with two green squares, meaning the robot only had to turn 180 degrees once. Thus, we solved this by simply making the robot do a single line track after turning 180 degrees. This allowed it to get back on the more manageable parts where it could do a double line track. I'll now introduce field force strategy for programming and the challenges faced. Due to time constraints, we only aim to get a full score on the line track. So in the evacuation zone, we simply aim to make a series of turns in order to return to the second part of the line track after the evacuation zone. The line track is identical to field two, thus we will skip over that when introducing our code. More importantly, there are important points where the robot has to carry out a certain set of instructions. For example, when the robot senses the silver tape, it will run the evac zone function and move to complete the task in the evacuation zone. So how do we do this? We managed to use loops in Python to check if silver tape is detected during the line track. As the silver tape is more reflective than white, we simply checked if RGB values of both car sensors were higher than that of white, which we had calibrated beforehand. So how did it avoid the obstacle? So the obstacle is a cylindrical object and we made use of the ultrasonic sensor to, de to detect the object. The EV3 has a distance function so that it will return the distance between an object it sees and the ultrasonic sensor. We check if the distance is below a certain value, which indicates that the object is within the ultrasonic sensor line of sight. The robot will then carry on with a series of turns to avoid the obstacle. A challenge we faced on the field was that the silver tape would be detected too early, even when the robot's car sensors were both on white, so it was quite inconsistent. Initially, we only used the left ground facing car sensor values as we thought it was sufficient to detect the silver tape, but it had kept detecting silver when it was on white, so we had to we had to check green, red, green, and blue values for both ground-facing color sensors. This result, this helped us solve the issue. That concludes our sharing on the robots run. Now we'll share what we have learned through this experience. So firstly, uh, we, I would like to talk about the soft skills we have developed through this experience. We developed our time management skills. Compared to our previous Robocard Rescue Line experience, our experience this time was better uh, because Previously, we spent a lot of time working on a robot and neglected filming until really the last minute where many issues started to appear. So in the end, we submitted a video that did not meet the guidelines. This time, although time was still very tight, we managed to at least submit working videos. And we also learned about the importance of teamwork and splitting up tasks. Uh, with the very limited time span we had to work on the robot, we had to ensure we both worked together very well and both of us proposed solutions to solve the challenges in both the hardware and software aspects of the robot, which allows to be efficient and complete as much of the mission as possible. Each of us uh, also contributed equally to the development.
We also improve our skills on the uh, EV3 MicroPython and gain deeper understanding of our code from the previous RoboCup Rescue Line Challenge. We also improve our skills on robot construction as we had to make sure sensor placement was optimal. The ground facing color sensors needed to be of an appropriate height from the ground to ensure the values from the sensors are consistent and our short sensor had to place an appropriate height to detect the obstacle consistently. Okay, thank you. That has concluded our presentation and our code is available at the website linked on this slide for your reference.